Hi guys and gals, it's Chris from chriswatsonmusic.com here again, and today we're going to have a look at how I've done the mix on my song Drowning. This is the last part of the videos, so we're finally there. I think we're pushing over an hour's worth of videos for a three and a half minute song. That's a tad ridiculous, but anyway, we'll just keep going through with it. And so with the mix, I go through a couple of different phases with my mix. Uh, I guess the first thing I, I do is maybe a little bit different from some people is I try to get a good static mix. So I usually find what's going to be the, the loudest part of the song, to be honest. And I try and get a good mix of all the instruments with the panning uh, and the levels from there. But I try to do it really without touching any of the fader sliders. So let's bring up the rack and we'll have a look exactly what I'm talking about here. Now, if we go right up to the top of the rack, we've got the first part that we talk about is really your, the, the gain stage at the start. And what I'll do is I'll go through and get a good balance of all the instruments. As I said, generally in the loudest part of the track um, through this part of, of the mix. I'll, I'll actually use the gain staging to, to get a good balance straight away before we go anywhere else. And I, I just think that tends to give you a, a good a good basis to start from and what that that frees you up to do is to only use your faders for automation purposes so to make slight adjustments uh, which you'll see that i've done in certain parts in this track um, by getting that that good good mix first it just means you've got something solid to work from and you're not going to be struggling with wild variations in your fader settings and all of a sudden running out of range to to use your sliders um, now you don't want to end up in a point where you really need a part of a track to get louder and you can't get it louder because you've already maxed out the faders. So setting a, a you know, sort of a bass mix by using the gain stages, that, that works for me. There are other people who don't even look at, at those knobs right up the top or they're just complete mystery. And they do everything down here with the faders. But I find this a very sort of intuitive way to work start from a good grounding and then use the the faders for adjustments so there's a couple of bits in the song where i've had to go through and and do some of these adjustments so i guess the first one that really comes straight in is on the bass guitars here so if we'll zoom in a little bit and go back up to the bass you can see in the intro i've actually got it stepping up a little bit because I found that while in the main part of the song, the, the balance for the bass was absolutely spot on, uh, in the, the start of the song and then the first verse, the bass was was overpowering the rest of the mix. It was quite, quite boomy in the mix. So I've just got some basic automation on the levels. Uh, if anyone's not really sure how, you, how to do it, um, the way I go through and do it, then there are other ways to do it. Is I just right-click on the fader I want to control, for this case, it's the fader that I'm automating. Uh, just right-click on the fader, edit automation. Okay, and then you can go in. It, it adds the automation lane here. And you can just click on it and draw in where you want to do the automation. And then once you've done that, you can just go in and start drawing all your automation. It's as simple as that. So I'm going to delete that because obviously I don't want that in there. I'm get rid of that whole thing. Why is my? There we go. Gone. So I've done that for both the bass tracks. Uh, you can see I've actually done a similar thing for some of the guitar parts as well. So we can see the guitar for the the main guitar parts. I've got some fades, dropping it off to bring it down to to different levels. So first first run through on these guitar parts here i've actually brought the 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 volume right up using the the fader but then during the bridge section which we've got here the volume drops down so let's just have a listen to what i've done there we'll solo those out and we'll start it from about here and we'll hear how it fades out and there's a lower volume for the bridge because there was less happening in the bridge they didn't really need to stand out quite so much <laughs> Oh, I've got move one. Mm. 
Okay, and then leading back into the main chorus again, they fade back up again. We'll go take it from here. Okay, and so if we have a listen to that in the, the entire mix, take the solo off, and you'll hear how it drops back down during the process of, of the, the change in the song, but they still sound sort of in the same sonic space. Let's have a listen. Oops, echo on the vocal. That'll fade out eventually. Um, it, I guess it, if they, they were still out of there, they'd drown everything else out for that part of the song. So that's what's happening there. Um, I guess this is a good little trick to take into account um, when you're you're working on a, on a track and you're having bits and pieces coming out. Pick the instrument or the sound that's the, the main focus of the song. In, in my case, it's, it's rock music, so it's usually the vocals. If there's an area where the vocals drop out, you know, find something else to fill the gap. Um, I do that up here. Uh, this is actually part, done as part of the performance it's, itself, but at the same time I do it later on in the mix as well. The In this part of the song, when the vocal drops out, um, this is when this riff first comes in, and you see that it, it does it here as well. When there's a gap in the song, the, the riff comes back in. So if we have a listen, we'll listen to it from here, and you see when the vocal goes out, it's sort of replaced by this other part of the song. So there's still always something there to, to grab the listener's attention. So have a listen. You can take my can you take my it's always good to have something for the listener to latch onto it any part of the song um, I've, I've done that that same sort of principle at the end here you can see with a quite a hefty uh, level adjustment when the backing vocals are still going but the main lead vocal drops out for for the fade out of the song i bring that riff back in quite loud so there's still something to grab the focus so let's have a listen there we'll just go from this part <laughs> And I've also done that, ignore me in the background there, I've also done that, the same idea with the keyboard parts too. I brought the volume right up to fill that gap and to bring you know, some something to focus on into the mix. Um, so apart from doing some vocal rides, which if we have a look uh, back here on the lead vocals, again, because there's less instrumentation going on in the first part of the song, um, I can bring the, the levels down you know, of the bass, of the lead vocal, and they gradually go back up to the, the level I want for the main part of the song, for the, the loudest sort of mix. As it's going, just bring it up slightly as there's more sounds being introduced so it, they don't get thrown into the background and get drowned out by the rest of the sounds. The other thing probably to have a look at the mix is because there's so many vocals, uh, panning does become quite important. Now, if I go through and have a look here at these vocals, you see we've got so many different parts here. We've got the mids, the, the, the four parts of the mid harmonies, um, or the, the main mid, and then the four backing versions, and then we've got the low and the, the rest of those as well. Um, you see what I've done with the panning? Some of them are panned hard left, hard right, I've got one with the effects that's going through because it's got reverb on it using the full stereo spread. And then I've got another version where I've reduced the width of that stereo spread. So when you go through and you combine all of those together, it gets a really nice full expansive sound. So we'll go from a part and in the chorus. So we'll take it from, say, here. And now let's have a look at what it actually does. Drowning deep in you, drowning in you, drowning in your love. Drowning deep in you, drowning in you, cause I breathe. 
too much. So that really spreads the sound out across the stereo spectrum and it gives each of the parts a bit of space, fills it out, and then when you blend all of the vocals in together, um, you get a really nice, big, wide sound. So let's have a listen. Drowning deep in you, drowning in you, drowning in your love. Drowning deep in you, drowning in you, because I breathe too much. Okay, and by having them spread out and then that, that stereo spectrum, it, it doesn't sound muddy. You can still hear everything really clear. And I think that's, that's important when you're going to be layering lots of a sound it does tend to turn to, 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 to mush. It all gets smushed together. So spread them out in the mix, and you'll keep that clarity there and also make a nice big sound. I guess the only other part, and I'll just turn all these, uh, turn off all these mutes that I just did. Okay, I guess the other part to talk about is the end. So let's have a listen to the end of the song. So I've done something a little bit strange here. The end fades off, but then another big sound starts coming in as well and before it cuts out to just like an acapella ending so let's just have a quick listen deep in you. so what i've actually done here is i've used some automation on an effect send we'll go right in and have a look here now you'll see all the instruments that, that create that, that wash sound. I've got a, a, a send here that I've called fade out verb. And you'll see that most of the instruments, or there's quite a few instruments that are going into that. So we've got the drums going into it, the main guitars, the bass, basically all the instruments that are playing at that time uh, were going into it, except for the keys and the synth. I wanted to keep them sort of playing themselves. And what I've done is they're all, you'll see that they're listed as pre. So what that means is I can fade out these faders and these tracks so that um, that should be so just pre. I can fade those out so they are uh, not going in to the, the main output, but at the same time they're still sending their signal out to this fade out reverb. And then this fade out reverb actually is automated to increase the level, which makes that nice big swell sound. Um, let's bring that up and play that again so you can hear it and we'll go back and you'll see the, the fader actually going through and doing that. So we'll go from about here. So that is what makes that nice big swell at the end. It's just something I did. I thought with the theme of the song and the idea of the title being called Drowning, I wanted to sort of feel like you're drowning in the sound at the end. Um, and then all of a sudden it just bang, it cuts through with that main refrain from the chorus. Um, I guess that's pretty much it really to do with, with the mixing of the song. Um, there's been a lot of videos in this series, so I hope you've enjoyed them. If you've got any questions, leave a comment on the, the video that you've got a question about. I'll do my best to answer them for you. Um, and I hope, as I said, I hope they've been beneficial and given you some ideas on just what you can do in reason. Until I get the next video out, I'll see you then. Take care.